Hey, what's up guys? Hope everyone's doing really well. Got a really great question last week about how to approach an unknown or really big code base. And I thought this question was really awesome because this is one of the things you'll do over and over again. New team, new project. If you join a new company, there's always this like big code base waiting for you that you're expected to understand. All right. So it might seem a little daunting, but it's really not, you know, there's big piles of code anywhere. As long as you can break down the steps, you should be able to approach any unknown piece of code. All right, so in this video, I just broke down kind of like six, six main categories of what I think is really important to understanding a new project or new code, whatever. We're gonna go through all six of these categories, hope it makes sense, and let's just start, all right? All right, the first thing we have to talk about before even getting into the code whatsoever is the environments or the environment setup, all right? So there are a couple important points to consider for this environment. First, you should at least be using the same kind of system as the rest of the team, right? Either Mac, Ubuntu, Scent, Fedora, Windows, that should at least be the same for the entire team. If everyone else is using like Scent OS and you're like, oh, I just wanna use Ubuntu because that's what I like, then that's not a good decision on your part, all right? So at the very least, on the system level, everyone should be on the same page, right? We're using Fedora, whatever release. So that's the system part. Now, for any computer, this is kind of like the operating system you're running on. It should be the same for every developer, but then on top of the operating system, you have different projects that different people are working on, right? So like system level, environment right here, and then project environment right above it. Project environment is usually a little easier to manage because much of the environment involved to kind of work on a project, if it's done well, it should be kind of encapsulated inside that project, right? You pull that project down and there's some kind of configuration in there that kind of sets a lot of stuff up for you. So project level is kind of straightforward because if the project set up well, it's just gonna, a lot of that dependency is gonna be stated, dictated for you. Where things get a little tricky is how people customize their computer system. And that's where things get a little crazy in the environment. So let's do a couple examples. Like if you guys used Linux before, I'm sure you've used many different package managers. Package managers are like software to let you install other software, all right? And each one does it a little differently. So at the very least, everyone should be using the same package manager. Like we're using CentOS and we're using this specific package manager. The other thing that's really crazy about a system is that it's highly customizable, right? You have your computer, nothing is stopping you from totally customizing your computer with whatever you want. You could upgrade that software package there, upgrade that library there. It's kind of like a free-for-all. So this is where things get a little crazy in the environment and there's kind of two, there's like a spectrum of how you can customize the system. One is like a really strict system setup and on the other side, it's a really flexible system setup. So let's just give an example. One job I worked at, we were given like a set image for development. It like, it was like sent OS 6.3 and it had all the packages, supposedly all the packages we need for development and we weren't allowed to customize anything. It was highly frowned upon to do any kind of customization. So it was like, start job, here's your computer, install this image and this is the image you have to use. It has everything. So that's a very strict style of development, but it's actually very safe because everybody is given the same exact image, right? The flip side of that, if things are really flexible, it just gets a little crazy because if you customize your libraries just a little bit, let's say you upgrade all your libraries because you just want to, but the rest of your team doesn't. And if you upgrade those libraries, introduce some dependencies along with those upgrades, and you essentially kind of disrupt the whole environment for everyone else by being so flexible. So, but people want to be flexible too. So it's kind of like this spectrum of how you set up a system. There's gotta be like a healthy medium between the two. All right, so that's enough talk about how to set up your actual computer yourself. Let's move on to the next one. 
All right, so the next step in understanding the code is to go through the build process. And once your environment is set up, you've now pulled the code down. So you have the code on your computer. Now you got this, now you got to get this thing up and running. So I say there's two passes at this, right? The first pass is real easy. Maybe somebody can help you, but once you get that code pulled down, just get it up and running, whatever it takes, even if you don't quite understand all the details, just get this code in and build it so you can actually see something. Like if it's a web server or a web app, you should see it running locally, right? If it's like a system library, it should compile to completion. So first thing you have to do is just get that baseline set up. All right, but obviously that's not good enough. Of course, you gotta take it to a deeper level. And the next level of this, I would highly recommend that you do your best to understand the build process as much as you can, all the different nuances, all right? So this is such a general thing, like there's so many software projects out there, I can't really speak to all of them, but I'm just saying build process to capture like the whole build process. There's like so many different steps, different nuances, different ways to track dependencies. It's just craziness, right? But whatever that craziness is, try your best to understand those little intricacies because it's gonna help you like really control that project a lot. So just kind of sift through the code. What's the software managing dependencies? What are all the steps it takes? Like how does it make that file? How does it compile that thing? Just go through all the details as best you can. Last point I have is that this building is different across many projects, but one thing that's universal is that it always has a final kind of output. All right, and what do I mean by output? But some people call these artifacts, but it's kind of like the final results of a build system. So if you're developing a system library, the final output is like the final binaries that you might ship to a customer. All right, if you're building this crazy Java web application, it could be that final zipped up um, Java file that you want to distribute out. So understand all the different details of the steps of the build process and then also understand what does the build process produce in the end right across all the different software projects there's always a final result and you got to figure out all the different little steps it takes to get to that final result all right and the more you understand the building the better a third category of the system is starting to get into the nitty-gritty details and this is like code and debugging and for this step is when you really start to understand the source code. So let's get into this first. When you first open up a new project, I guarantee you will not understand like 90% of what's going on. There'll be so many different files, you know, it's gonna be crazy and daunting, but you shouldn't try to understand all the files one by one. That's not how you should go about it. You should do that a little later when you have a better grasp of like the flow of whatever application it is, but don't just look at source files first, all right? One thing that I like doing, and I think it works pretty well, is that understand the code through debugging. And what do I mean by, but you can just use the debugger to help you, right? If you're using Ruby, use Bybug or use PDB for, B, PDB, I forget, Python debugger or GDB for C, but anyways, try to find a basic use case of the application and put in a breakpoint. Just put in a breakpoint somewhere so you can step through the code and see what's happening. And let me just give you some examples, but you know, if you're developing like a command line application, just put in a breakpoint inside the main function or something and just run the program, you'll see the program hit and just start stepping through slowly and see where all the code goes all the code goes, right? This is essentially debugging, but you're actually not debugging anything, right? There's no bug to debug. You're just using debugging to help you understand the flow of the code. So set up a breakpoint and hit it. And then once you hit that breakpoint once, just hit it a hundred more times and just really understand how the code is flowing. So breakpoint hits, you know, checks these logic, goes to that function. Okay, that function uses this other function keeps progressing and gets the output. And the first one is definitely gonna be real hard, 
but you know, do your first use case, debug through your first use case, then your second one is gonna be easier, third, fourth, fifth, and before you know it, you're gonna understand all the source code. All right, so that's how to understand all the source code in a very practical way without just reading through files. All right, guys, halfway done. We just did three categories, environment, building, and source code debugging, and we have three more categories to go. All right, so fourth category that I wanna put out there is understanding the testing. And this is actually really important because if the project's done pretty well, there will be some kind of test structure in place to test the library or test the web app or all that stuff. So it's gonna be really good. This is kind of the same mentality as understanding the build process, but try your best to understand the testing project and every single different software code base is gonna be tested a different way. So just a couple things that are commonly used in testing, you know, there's always some kind of like scaffolding that's set up. So scaffolding is kind of like these helpers to set up an environment for you to test, right? Let's say you're testing this web application. There could be some like scaffolds to set up a test database for use, test database to use. So you could like test out all these different things. There's gonna be probably like test factories to like create these dummy models for you to use. There's also gonna be like mocking if your web application uses a lot of third-party services and it can't really like hit all the third-party services for real in a test environment, so it's mocked or like faked in a different way too. So like, you know, scaffolding, like test dummy models, mocking, those are all just a couple, few examples of many, many different ways to do testing. But the mentality here is just the same, right? It's really good just to understand how the project is tested, not, not only so you can write tests yourself, but it'll also force you to understand what this stuff is actually doing. You'll, the tests aren't gonna read very well, usually tests are kind of like a free-for-all, but just at a basic level, understand the structure of the test environment. All right, so that's testing, pretty straightforward, spend some time there. Let's go on to the fifth one. Fifth thing to understand for any single software project is gonna be deployment. So let's just remember, let's take it where we left it off at building, all right? No matter what software project you're working on, there's gonna be an end result to the build process. Now you've like done all your homework, you understand all the nuances of the build, and remember, it all has a final product or the artifacts. So. Once those artifacts are created, they need to go somewhere, right? If you're building a web application, it's gotta be deployed onto a server somewhere. If you're building like a system library, it's gotta be packaged up and maybe pushed up to some online repository, but whatever it is, there's a final product and then there's a deployment phase, whatever that deployment might be. So step number five is like understanding the deployment and what that means. Sorry, I repeated that word too many times, but if the project is kind of structured really well, there's gonna be something in place called continuous integration and deployment. So every time a project is successfully built, it gets deployed somewhere. So you have to understand how that deployment happens, right? Because it's not just like you copy a file. It's actually very, very detailed. You might have to like copy this project onto this computer somewhere run, restart a couple processes on the computer, do some setup, but this is also like a very, very important pro part of the whole project, right? Because deploying your project is also part of the development. So try your best to understand how that project gets out there for the end user, and it's only gonna do help you. All right, guys, last but not least, this is the sixth and final category that I have for understanding any code base. And at this point, if you did the first five steps pretty well, you have a really good understanding of one project, right? You can build it, you can debug it, you know how the source code works, you know how to test it, you know how to deploy it, you know how to deploy it. The last step to understanding the code base is that you have to understand the other projects that it depends upon, right? So. If you're working in a professional setting, it's very, very rare that there's just one application or one project going on. There's actually more likely many, many different 
applications being built, many different code bases going on at the same time. All right, so, and every single application has some kind of dependencies with its neighboring applications, right? So your application is here, right? You know how to build one very well, but it might be using many different things. It's using some third-party services like Facebook login, but it's actually also using other applications in your system. So this last part is understanding how your app interacts with other apps beside it. I kind of call it like neighboring applications, like neighbors, right? So I have my application, maybe the team over in Europe is working on this different application that you depend upon. So you're always talking with them to like figure out how to communicate. So the last step is not only understanding the code base you're working on, but understanding how it interacts with other applications around it, all right? And once you get to that level, once you're at that level, that's starting to get into the whole system level, but then you will really, really understand how all the software is working for the whole company, not just for one project. All right, so that was the last step. All right, guys, that's six main categories for understanding any unknown code base. I'm gonna leave the categories right here. Um, I remember the first time I did this, it was just really crazy to understand. And especially if this is like your first job, your first unknown code base, this is gonna be pretty hard and take you more time. But as you start kind of interacting with newer and newer random code bases, you'll just get the hang of this a little bit more. All right, so hope this helps. If you're looking at any new project, good luck to you. Just like break it down, just like break down all the different things you need to understand and just hit it one at a time and it'll just be cumulative, right? At first, you'll understand nothing, but after the first thing you get, the second one is easier, the third one's easier, and it just, and before you know it, you just can develop and write code all day. So that's it for this week, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please send me a comment or an email, click like, and I hope everyone has a great rest of the week. All right, take care.